Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, in mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahawa, and blessed be the true, holy, powerful, in mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahawa Shai, our Lord and our Savior. double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that were well. Shalom, Wahabla, Bakyasho, Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Coming back at y'all again with another lesson, Baharu Chachara Shah Amaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth, and um, this is somewhat like a follow-up lesson from the uh, video that I did yesterday. The title of this video is going to be something along the lines of "Chaos Will Soon Erupt Here in America and Really All Around the World." All right, but we're focusing over here in the states in uh, Babylon, the so-called Great. Okay. Um, chaos is going to erupt on a, a high level. We can see again that we're, we're close. We're here, okay? The mandates is going into effect. People are losing their jobs and they are angry. They are pissed off, okay? And they're starting to show their anger on a low level. All right, even here in Iowa, I'm hearing about different um, nurses, right, uh, having to quit. You know, or be fired or whatever it may be, having to uh, leave their job because they refuse to be a guinea pig for this shot. OK, and um, we see protests happening in different areas All right, uh, around the world. There, there's people, uh, there's the, the maxed, the, the ones that's maxed and the ones that's unmaxed fighting against each other. All right. And, and this is all biblical prophecy. Okay, in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter it says, <clears throat> "Let's just read it." This is Second Ezra, chapter nine. Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." This is what we are doing. We are measuring the time diligently. Okay, because all we're looking for is the return of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Because when Yahweh Shai returns, he's coming to end this world. Matthew's the 24th chapter. The disciples came unto Yahweh Shai privately and asked them, What shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? Roughly paraphrasing. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's coming to end this world, to completely end this world. Okay, so that's what we're measuring the time for. We're seeing. When our Lord and our Savior is going to return, this is the mentality of the righteous. This is the mentality of the Lord's servants, of his chosen, of his elect. When we read throughout the scriptures, they was always looking for Yahweh Shai's uh, uh, second return. The disciples, they asked him, we just quoted Matthew 24, right? What shall be the signs that I coming end of the end of the world? But they asked him again, right? In Acts the first chapter. Okay, is now the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? When Yahweh Shai returns, he's returning to restore the kingdom to the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. Okay, this is what we are. This is why we are to be diligently, or, or this is why we're supposed to be diligent when it comes to this ministry and when it comes to uh, uh, standing upon our watch and measuring the times. Even Ezra, Ezra asked, "How long, O Lord?" Right. What shall be the, uh, uh, the the parting asunder of times? Okay? So this is the spirit that we're in the right spirit. Looking for the end of this world. Not looking for this place to continue. Not looking to drop a album or reality TV show or trying to have the biggest school in 10 years. All right? Or taking a year off to build a homestead. This is not the, this, that's not the right spirit. The spirit that we are to be in is standing upon our watch. Measuring the times diligently in itself. Because we are in the end. The scriptures say, blessed is that servant whom is, when his Lord comes shall find him doing. Doing what? Serving him. Being in his spirit. The Lord said in the book of Matthew's, uh, Revelations, the second chapter. Hold fast that which ye have already until I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, the same shall get power over the nations. Okay, so we need to hold fast unto this faith and hold fast unto these works. And to this knowledge and wisdom and understanding because Yahweh Shai is on his way. The bridegroom is on his way. And when he returns, when the bridegroom returns, he's looking for the wise virgins with the oil in their lamp. Right? With the uh, 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 with their lamp burning bright as ever. Okay? 
So it says he answered me and he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. These are the times that we're living in. Yahweh Shai, the heavenly father, Yahweh, sending his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to visit this place. Okay. The visitation has begun. We're, we're seeing we're seeing his presence get stronger and stronger upon this earth. That's why we're, we're that's why we're increasing in faith. That's why we're increasing in knowledge and wisdom and understanding in spirituality. All right. In mental uh, 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 mental strength. OK, we're, we're increasing. Why? Because the day of Yahweh Shai's return is right around the corner. His visitation his glorious visitation is on the horizon. OK. It says, verse 3, therefore, then, or Salaki, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, this is uproars, all right? These people that's losing their jobs for refusing to be guinea pigs, to refusing to be lab rats, all right? They're in uproar, okay? And we're going to hear more about it in the next few days, all right, and in the recent weeks, and it's going to intensify. All right, it's going to get worse. And this is just one thing that's happening, right? It, it also mentioned earthquakes, all right? Uh, um, the East Coast just got hit with um, the East Coast and uh, down down South, I believe. You know, I know New York was, was touched by it. Um, New Orleans, okay, was hit by that hurricane or was affected by that hurricane. That caused damage, okay? That's causing problems down there. Okay, that's just two. That's just two things that the wildfires. Okay, all these different things are going on. That's a part of biblical prophecy showing you that we're in the end. This devil is is, is spread thin. All right. Uh, on top of that, there's World War Three going on. Okay. So there's all t different type of um. The, the Lord is sending all different type of plagues. All right, incrementally breaking this place down. All right, and that's that's a. That's a beautiful way to, to take down your opponent. Not just the, the Lord is not going to just knock him out in the first round. OK, the Lord's going to break him down for 12 rounds. OK, and in that 12th round, that's when he's going to get him the fuck out of there. All right. Easy knockout. Easy KO. All right. So let's get this real quick in Job and then we'll read some of this article. This is Job chapter 18 and verse five. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out. And the spark of his fire shall not shine. This devil's being put out. Okay. This devil is losing his power and he's going down quickly and speedily. The Lord said, I beheld Satan cast down as lightning, roughly paraphrased. So he's going down fast and he's going to go down violently. All right. In uh, Revelations, it says, uh, thus with violence shall Babylon be thrown down. So it's going to get real violent here in the States. It's going to get real violent here in Babylon. All right. It says the light shall be dark in his tabernacle and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened and his own counsel shall cast him down. He's in a trick bag. He cannot win. It's written that he will lose and everything written has has came to pass and is coming to pass and is coming into fruition. It's written that he will lose. Ain't no way around it. Who has resisted the Lord's will? Not one. Right. It says, for he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. The jinn shall take him by the heel, and the robber shall prevail against him. All right, he's going to lose. Okay, he's going to lose. He, again, he's in a trick bag. He's in a trap. He's in a snare. He thinks he's going to win, but he's not. That's a part of the trap. That's a part of the snare. The Lord has him deceived. All right. It says the snare is laid for him in the ground and a trap for him in the way. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. Terror shall make him afraid on every side. So terrors is going to hit this place at every angle. All right. At every angle, this devil is going to be getting smacked. Right. And he's not going to be able to know what to, uh, and he's not going to know what to do with it. All right. And it's going to drive him to his feet. It's going to bring him down, sit in the dust, O virgin thought of Babylon. Verse 12, his strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. The destruction is meeting at, uh, is going to meet this place. It's quickly and speedily in the book of Ezekiel. It says evil will only be uh, uh, evil and only evil behold is come. The end is come. The end is coming. Watch it for thee. Right. 
And Isaiah says, hell is removed beneath thee to meet thee at thy coming. Roughly paraphrasing, right? It says his confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle. Salaki, I've skipped the verse. Verse 13, it says, it shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. The firstborn of death is Yahweh Shai Mashiach, all right? Who liveth and reigneth, okay? He's coming to collect his elect, right? To gather his chosen and to bring down this devil, to bring down this beast, this dragon, and the whore that writhed upon him. Right. It says his confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. All right. Prepare to meet your maker who is our power, our Lord, our savior, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. All right. So that's it on that. Let's read a little bit of this article. It says <clears throat> this on RT. Publish September 28, 2021. From healthcare heroes to second class zeros, New York hospitals sacked their unmaxed employees as police states uh, jaws snap shut. It says New York has begun firing and suspending healthcare workers who refused to get in, uh, who refused to get jabbed with the experimental shot, proving the mandate from the state. That once praised its frontline heroes is really just about power, right? So at one point, all right, these people that was uh, putting their, you know, quote unquote, putting their lives on the line during the demic, right? Still working during this time of need and struggle. Now they're being fired, okay? Because they refuse to surrender to this unrighteous, unlawful decree. Right. Monday was the deadline for New York's healthcare workers to receive their first dose. And the state's facade of blissful obedience has already begun to crack while New York City health and hospitals, uh, health plus hospitals head Dr. Mitchell Katz has reported that just five percent of city nurses were unmaxed and presumably kicked to the curb. The number across the state is significantly higher at 16 percent, according to Governor Hakul, who spoke on Saturday of potentially filling and staffing void Slakia, of potentially filling the staffing void with National Guard service members or out of state medical workers as she declared yet another statewide disaster emergency, another emergency. That's that job shall make him afraid of terrors on every side. All right, so they're dealing with all type of different things all around the states, and it's not going to stop. Just like in ancient Egypt, in ancient Egypt, the Lord just kept smacking their ass, man. Plague after plague after plague, okay? Now, these plagues, they're going to be happening simultaneously, okay? This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 15, and verse... 10 behold my people is uh, behold my people is led as a flock to the slaughter i will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of egypt but i will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof the lord's going to destroy all of egypt being a uh, uh, modern day egypt being america this whole land is going to be obliterated this whole uh, land is going to be annihilated but first, he's going to send plagues upon this place, incrementally breaking it down before he destroys the whole land. Verse 12, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. It's the Lord bringing this plague and his punishment upon this wicked ass place. Okay, he's in control. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? The Lord is bringing, the, the, the Lord is bringing destruction upon this place. Verse 13, they that till the ground shall mourn. For their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with a fearful constellation. So the Lord is going to continue because it's already been happening. He's going to continue to uh, uh, attack the crops, making the prices, the food, the, uh, the prices of these different foods skyrocket in the grocery stores. All right. Verse 14. So now it's going to get to the point where a simple trip to the grocery store is life and death. Right. You might not make it back. Okay. A simple trip to the gas station is life or death. You may not make it back. 
That's how serious things are going to get. Okay? Matter of fact, <clears throat> this is 2nd Ezra's chapter 6 and verse... 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. All right. So when these storehouses get empty, what do you think people's going to do? They're going to start running into houses. Right. Oh, I heard dude up the street was a prepper. Let's go see what he, how, uh, how much he has prepped. Right. It says, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. The love of many shall wax cold. These are all prophecies that we are that we're seeing the, the beginning stages of. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the foundation shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. So the, uh, oh, the water, no water, no water, no food. When there ain't no water and no food, motherfuckers going to lose their damn mind. They're not going to know how to act. Okay, there was something else I was looking for. That was good, but there was something else I was looking for. Is it the 16th chapter? The second Ezra is chapter 16. And verse 31. It says, even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their house with the sword. Now, the elder Malcolm. Uh, was on the comment board yesterday and he was going in on how uh, thousands, right? Thousands of military personnel, okay, um, across the military and um, all these different fractions, all right, uh, uh, of the army are, 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 are leaving, right? Because they're also refusing. It's not just healthcare, it's not just nurses that's refusing to be unmaxed or, or, or refusing to be maxed out. All right, to, that, that's refusing to max that ass up, right? It's all different. It, it, it's all different um, occupations, all right, including the military. So the ex-military, they're going to start forming groups. They're going to start forming small militias, and that's where this prophecy comes into play. When there's no food and there's no water, the same uh, 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 ex-military, right, they're going to gather together with their guns, all right. And they're going to go look for food. They're going to go look for for their own water. Right. They're going to take matters into their own hand. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword and the earth shall be laid waste and the fields thereof shall wax old and the, and her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns because no man shall travel there through it's going to there's going to be there's no uh going to be no work for Egypt so don't don't lo don't lose salvation over a job right you're going to get maxed out for a job and the next thing you know the job shuts down right or the job is on fire because of the hell and the chaos that's going to erupt Right. Verse 33, the virgin shall mourn. So you did, then you just done got your ass waxed out for no reason. The virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. Great death is coming upon this place. Right. In the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. What wars? All type of different wars, man. Food wars, race wars, class wars, gas wars. All right. Get it, Lord's will, get an uh, article on that. And their husbands shall perish of famine. Now, if the husbands is dying, what you think is going to happen to the women? Right? Great death is coming upon this place. All right? Let's go back into 2nd Andrews 15. It says, verse 14, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw off nigh. <coughs> And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And <coughs> Salakia. <coughs> and swords in their hands. <coughs> Excuse me. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. Sedition means an uprising. This is an uprising that we see take, taking place. And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. 
That's a par- like like the movie Purge. It's going to be lawlessness out here. Chaos. That's chaos. If they're not regarding their kings or princes, that means they're not following the laws of these so-called kings and princes. In modern day terms, it will be what? These these governors, right? These uh, 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 officials, okay? They're not going to be regarded. Okay? It says, <clears throat> uh, it says the Lord will cause, this is from the elder um, Manatazak, the Lord will cause nuclear missile or nuclear war to uh, take place. It's not letting me scroll down. But that was another article. Um, Lord's will, we read, finish on this and then we'll jump a couple, uh, jump around through a couple articles. It says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. That's a purge. That's chaos happening. Everybody's going to be free to do what the fuck they want to do. Right? Verse 17, A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. How is that going to take place? By this military personnel that they're... Uh, uh, um, Calling to bring in, all right, the National Guard and so on and so forth. All right, it says, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have, we can see that happen, like I said, in, in, in the next month, within the next month. We can see that happen in November, okay, in the beginning of the winter, in December. All right, military troops on the ground. Kicking doors in and stomping heads in, right? For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's chaos happening, man. Chaos happening is coming to a city near you. All right. It says... After all the doctors, nurses, and hospital staff staffers themselves have done nothing wrong professionally, some whistleblowers have expressed concern at the possibility of being separated from patients they've cared for for years, and many of their patients will no doubt be blindsided when their long-term care, uh, cares explicit, um, ex explicably vanish to be replaced with soldiers in scrubs. Some doctors and nurses have managed to hang on using religious exemptions, which may or may not hold up in court as the state government has declared them illegitimate. All right. It's about to get real, man. OK, it says even the religious loophole in act. <clears throat> the threatened staff shortages are very real. As at least one upstate New York hospital has already discovered the hard way days before vaccination mandate was set to take effect. Lewis County General Hospital announced it would have to temporarily stop delivering babies as neonatal nurses resigned rather than receive the jab, which despite rushed FDA approval, remains an unknown quantity regarding long-term side effects and other uses. And I had a dream last night that the motherfuckers that got the jab is going to completely bug the fuck out, right? All they got to do is activate that shit and we going to see fucking, it's going to be like a damn zombie movie, man. And I'm not talking about these motherfuckers. Biting people, which that's going, it's going to get there. It's going to get there. Like I did in the lesson yesterday in the siege, cannibalism happens. All right. In a famine, when there's lack of resources, people will resort to cannibalism. Okay. Baba Kusha, bear with me. But soon we're going to start seeing <clears throat> the long-term side effects of the people that's been maxed out. There's people that's been walking around with the vaccine for damn near a year, right? Since the beginning of this year. So early next year, we can see, you know, uh, we can see the different effects of this jab that this jab has after uh, just a year, okay? The jabs also don't seem to protect recipients against getting uh, the Rona, right? 
which was kind of the point of getting everyone vaccinated to begin with. Or at least that was the story Americans were told when the shots were first rolled out. That's the story. They're lying to you. They're deceiving your ass, man. And we, it says that you cannot deceive the elect and we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. We're not going to fall. We're not going to crumble, man. That's, that's death in a, in a, uh, <clears throat> that's death in a damn syringe. Okay. We're not taking, the Lord said that he has 7,000 men that he has reserved, which will not bow their knee to buy all. The 7,000 is just the number of completion. It's talking about his servants, his elect men, all right? And us being of the hopeful elect, as it says in Maccabees, we're fully resolved in our mind that we're not going to eat of any unclean thing. Or in this case, inject ourselves with that unclean potion. That's death, all right? You're injecting yourself with death. What would be the point? What would be the point? So you can keep a job just to die? Fuck that, man. Right? That issue has been largely glossed over as Joe Biden seems to suggest that uh, the jab, for democracy's sake, is the new brass ring to reach for. And the U.S. sinks further into the swamp its leaders have so fervently embraced. The U.S. is sinking. This is a sinking ship. All right? And it's not going to be able to recover. All right. So <clears throat> North Korea claims it successfully tested new hypersonic missile. And them things is fast. Them things is real fast. Okay. In an hour, Babylon is going to be destroyed. The whole land. Right. Through what? Through these hypersonic missiles. Through these intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right. They're not testing them for no reason. North Carolina hospital system fires 175 employees as mandate takes effect. There's another one I've seen. The Democrats deranged defund the police movement helped fuel America's biggest murder spike since the Kennedy era. Biggest murder spike. That's only going to go up. That's only going to increase. Again, chaos will erupt in the very near future. There's a specific one I'm looking for, then we can um, close out. <clears throat> Most Americans don't trust Biden and U.S. government on uh, jab uh, or on Rona information. All right, so it's division. A kingdom divided cannot stand. Right here it is. Man pulls knife on motorists. In heated argument in petrol station uh, amid UK fuel shortage frenzy. This nigga not playing. So now you're going to have to, you go into the gas station, you're going to have to bring some heat with you. And we just read it. Friends shall fight one against each other as enemies. All right. Uh, nation against nation with uh, swords in there. One people against another people with swords in their hands. Look at that mini sword he got in his hand. Ready to do damage. Right. An enraged motorist pulled an object resembling a knife on another driver while in a block queue at a fuel station in the UK capital amid Britain's fuel supply crisis that has left 90% of pumps dry in parts of the country. That's tough. And that's going to come here. Right? You got to be strapped to go get some gas. You got to be strapped to go get some food. Fuck the malls. Ain't going to be no damn malls. Ain't nobody going to be worried about uh, the New Jordans, right? On Monday, a video purported to show a furious driver brandishing what appeared to be a knife at a petrol garage in Welling, southeast London. While wielding the weapon, the man shouted at the other motorist who he accused of trying to cut the long queue for fuel. <clears throat> 
It says after an intense exchange of words, the man was carried several feet across the street on the bonnet of the car. He had just approached with the sharp object. He then proceeded to kick the driver's door and booted the vehicle's wing mirror. This is going to be typical. This is going to be something that we see typical. Right. Happening every day, everywhere around uh, um, not only America, but the world. This is in Britain. OK, Man, let's see how you know there's a video. Look, he's on that. Give me the fucking gas, man. I'll stab your fucking tires. See, this, this is about to... Hey, people's gonna start dying over some over some petrol. Right? Losing their life at the G station. Okay? It's about to get real. We need to be locked in with the spirit. Alright? If we're in the spirit, we'll be straight. All right, let's get let's get one more precept. Um First Peter 4:13 That's not it. Is it 5? <clears throat> This is 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? We must continue to follow that which is good, which is these scriptures, and will be kept from the harm that the Lord is bringing upon this world. Having that said, Adawan Rataza, that was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachodash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rachachodash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom Wahabla Bakyar Shari Asharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom. I'm not kidding, brothers. Keep on pushing. Stay sober. Stay diligent. Stay faithful. Stay prayed up. <clears throat> Continue to be followers of that which is good. Salvation draw off nigh, and redemption is near to believe. Shalom.